Joined now by another member of our all-decade team, former Ohio State Buckeye, Evan Turner, a couple of times won the Big Ten Player of the Year Award. And Evan, it's hard to believe that it's been a decade, that it's been 10 years since you last wore the Scarlet and Gray, at least for those of us who covered you. Is it as hard to believe for you? Yeah, no, it really is. Honestly, um, that 10 years went by fast, you know, and uh, I consider just being 30, you know, 31. And we're talking about the all-decade team or, you know, even sometimes people talk to me about stuff I did back in college. It's like, I was literally a kid, and that was like 10 years ago, and it's kind of like, where, where did the time go, you know? So. Listen, careers are built during the regular season. You play so many games, non-conference and conference play, but legacies a lot of times are cemented in the postseason. And you are <laughs> as well known for one shot as any Big Ten player maybe over the past decade, and that, of, of course, the 37, 40-footer that you hit in the 2010 Big Ten tournament to knock off not just yeah. any team, but Michigan as well. And I remember being there, having a great angle of seeing it. I mean, it never left the middle of the basket. Do you still remember as vividly as it happened that day, that shot and the reaction to it? Yeah, I kind of, I tell people, yeah, I remember that. And I, I remember like leading up to it, I thought, because, you know, I used to shot at the gym at night and I comprehended what I was doing that season. And I was kind of like, I knew people were going crazy for it. So, you know, people were talking about POI and stuff. So I was like, it's been a great year. And I always know, like, great things, great great moments in great years. And I was kind of like, something's going to happen or I know I'm going to have to make a shot or some, something's going to solidify this great year. And I remember shooting from, like, a couple times from half court while I was shooting at night. And I was like, as long as I hold my follow through, it's going to go in. And when it happens, just react <laughs> like – like you knew it was going to happen, you know? And uh, I remember throughout the game, I couldn't hit anything. I remember sitting there like, why can't I make a shot? Why is this game so crazy? Why are we up 15 and now we're down two? Thank you to Manny Sims, you know, uh, I mean, uh, Manny Harris, you know, Deshaun Sims, and, you know, Stu Douglas, they hit some big shots. Darius Morris, and I remember the timeout came. I remember, remember legit thinking like, oh, this is where I have to make a shot. Like, this is where I'm going to make that shot. So. Hold your follow through and don't react crazy. Just know you know it went in. It was going to go in. Yeah, act like you've done it before because you had done it before. And, hey, listen, you would do it again because as amazing as that shot was, I think you'd make an argument that the game you played the next game and how clutch you were against Illinois scoring the points late in regulation and in overtime and then in the championship game, I think you had 31 against Minnesota I look back on that three-day stretch as one of the best postseason stretches that I've seen any player play in three consecutive games. What do you think of when you think back to that entire three-day span? Oh, first, thank you. Um, secondly, I just remember Dallas Lord and I, we were roommates at the hotel, and like, thank the Lord the Michigan shot went in, you know, because we had a week break before, uh, week off break before in between us winning a Big Ten title that year and a tournament. You know, so we really needed to really play some games to really get ready for the NCAA tournament. So that was cool. I remember I remember battling with my childhood friend, Amitra McKinney. I just remember how good he was. I remember being down like 11 at one point and how crazy that game was. And I was just like, man, like we really have to win. It worked out for us. And Minnesota's playing great that weekend as well. I just remember it's just a great team effort. And finally, we didn't have like a barn burner we were able to beat them in the second half and win the title and that was a fun couple of days of basketball i remember with some of my best friends and that was the last that was right before all started getting crazy crazy around that time you know <laughs> so it was cool now in covering you for the entire time that you were in columbus one thing i never really understood was the nickname somebody dubbed you the villain which to me it never it never really made much sense you weren't a guy who other fans hated because of the way that you acted on the court. I mean, you just played hard. And I understand that other fans never liked the best player on the team, but you didn't come off as the villain. So where did the villain come from? I never really got it. So Mark Titus. So Titus and I, we actually they just put a – Hamish just made a T-shirt of Titus and I. We're on the same shirt. It's like college jam. But uh, Titus and I, we would go back and forth with each other every single day, you know, like making fun of each other. And you know, when, I, when I competed, I would – get after it you know and uh 
I didn't, I know it came from the blog, the club trail blog, and he just called me the villain, he called me the villain. And uh, I guess as reserved as I am now, I, when I start to compete, I, I, I go for the gusto, you know, and not like in a dirty way, but I just compete. And when I was younger and immature and everything, like it was either win or like <laughs> throw a hissy fit, you know, <laughs> and that's where it came from. And, you know, that, that's the beauty of basketball is where you can take out your emotions and, you know, off the court, your gentleman, everything else like that. And on the court, you, you go to war. And that was a fun part of, a, of it all. So that's probably where the villain came from in the locker room. Other than that, it was just E.T. Hey, man, you've proved that sometimes the villain can actually be the good guy and can actually win <laughs> at the end of the movie. Sometimes those are the best movies that we get to watch. Uh, yeah, right. Evan, we appreciate the time, man. Congratulations on being named to the All-Decade team. Of course, we wish you uh, continued luck in the pros as well. Yeah, no doubt. Appreciate you guys. Big Ten Network. Rick, keep doing your thing, bro. <laughs> you'll, be, uh, you'll be running it before it's all said and done. But once again, I always appreciate the positive energy you guys gave me in the past and always reaching out and, you know, putting part of stuff that I can show my little daughter. So I appreciate that. So thanks again, guys. And I can't, you know, I can't say it enough. Appreciate Our pleasure, you. man.